Um, first, I'll say my apologies for the lack of eye contact. I tried to memorise this speech on the plane this morning, but my brain wasn't working. I think I was over-celebrating Carlton's win in the AFL last night too much. Um, my name is Steve Trowbridge, and on behalf of my family, I'd like to start off by saying that I'm very honoured and humbled to be here to speak about my family's journey regarding our son, Levi, that was diagnosed with KCNQ2. Unfortunately, my wife, Kasha, and Levi couldn't attend today. Our journey began when Kasha found out she was pregnant with our first child. Everything was smooth sailing through pregnancy until he was first born. That's when we noticed Levi had what we thought at the time was trouble bringing wind up after a feed. Once we were discharged from the hospital, Levi seemed to have the same reaction after a feed, but this time it was clear that it just wasn't wind as Kasha noticed him go bright red, hold his breath as his eyes deviated and head tilted. This was for around 30 seconds, which was the beginning. The next day when the midwife came for the usual checkup, that's when Kasha mentioned this reaction and was told by the midwife to film it if Levi seemed to have a similar episode. Soon after that point, Levi had a seizure lasting two minutes. The midwife was quickly on the phone to the hospital and told Kasha she needed to go there immediately. I soon received a phone call while I was at cricket saying that Levi was being rushed to the ICU at the Northern Hospital. As Kasha was getting ready to leave, Levi had another seizure, which my sister quickly filmed on her phone to show the medical team at the hospital. We didn't realise at that time how detrimental that video would be for Levi. Once Kasha was at the Northern Hospital, Levi was having more regular seizures and holding his breath for countless minutes, which felt like an eternity. Levi was quickly placed on an IV drip, feeding tubes and urg urgently rushed for tests. This included a lumbar puncture, blood test before Levi was placed on a brain monitor and in an incubator to be monitored. Levi was placed on anti-seizure medication that wasn't working effectively and spent four days at the Northern Hospital before he was transferred to the Children's Hospital. He was only six days old at this stage. Once Levi arrived at the Royal Children's Hospital, he was placed in an incubator once again as he couldn't regulate his body temperature and was lethargic. The next day after Levi was continuing to seizure, he was placed on a breathing apparatus and on life support. That was when Levi was at his weakest and most critical. There are no words that can describe the agony of watching your seven-day-year-old baby hooked up to every machine possible and not knowing what the outcome could be. We didn't know at the time, but were told later by the doctors that they didn't believe he would make it. So you got, we went from having this beautiful baby boy to seven days later, not knowing if he was gonna survive. The next course of action was placing Levi on a 24-hour EEG video and, and videoing him to find out what type of seizure Levi was having in hopes of seeing if there were any triggers before or after the seizure. We had now four teams working with Levi, the metabolic team, the genetic team, the neurology team, and the pediatricians in hope to get an answer before Levi couldn't keep fighting anymore. They decided that all teams needed to act fast, so Levi was placed on various vitamins and had blood tests three times a day, continuing anti-seizure medication during this time. After a grueling three weeks, we got a diagnosis after the Kasha, Levi and myself underwent a blood test from the genetic team. Levi was diagnosed with KCNQ2. It was a shock to both of us as we learnt that it was his own genetics that caused his rare condition, but the answer gave us hope as the neurological, neurological team modified his medication to control his seizures. During this period, Levi had over 30 seizures that were both physical and brain seizures, leading to around 60 to 80 minutes of him stop, stopping breathing in his first three weeks of life. My family and I weren't going to let this diagnosis define Levi, and therefore we brainstormed ideas in ways to create awareness and much needed funds for this rare genetic condition. At this present time, there is no known cure. We soon came up with the idea that I would run the Melbourne Half Marathon and start a GoFundMe page to raise money directly for the Casing 2 Foundation in hopes of finding the cure. I started this pitch to I started to pitch this idea to friends and family when I got in contact with Sarah James Butcher from the KCNQ2 Foundation regarding my idea. We launched this campaign in hopes of raising $2,000. We soon realised that our expectations were going to become reality with our first sponsor, Nova Caravans, who I work for, donating the first $2,000. Over the coming months, we tried to raise much needed awareness and funds as possible, resulting in us hosting a fundraiser at my local cricket club. Kasha sourced numerous small and local businesses to donate raffle prizes in hopes we could raise as much money as possible. The day turned out to be more than we could ever imagine with a great turnout and loads of generous donations. 
Shortly after, the day of the marathon had finally arrived. With a few nerves, I was able to successfully complete it with the constant thought in my mind to make Levi proud. It was an emotional yet satisfying achievement as I was doing something I was so passionate about with the support of my family and loved ones. We were pleased to announce that the closing balance of the GoFundMe page was an astonishing $21,500. The amount exceeded all of our expectations and more, but that wasn't the only thing to surprise us. We had an anonymous donor who happily said they would donate what we made. So there was an extra 21,000, which took it up to $43,000. Now in the grand scheme of things, $43,000 doesn't seem a lot in terms of medical research and that, but if some part of that can help eventually find a cure, then I would have set out to achieve the goal that I set out to do. Our family has decided that we'll continue our efforts to raise much needed awareness and funds that one day will hope, help Levi and others and hope find a cure. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Sarah and Andrew for allowing me to represent the KCNQ2 Foundation today and I'd like to thank all of you for listening to our family's journey.